The problem. You shot an image over one or more nights with the information oriented in such and such a way. And then, an extended period of bad weather blew in so that you were not able to shoot again for weeks. And when the weather finally clears and offers you another good moonless night, the orientation of the image has altered so that your new information is oriented like this. If that information were stacked on top of your previous information, it's going to present you with a framing conundrum. The image will be cut off like this. To address this, you have several options in front of you. If you can afford it, you can put a camera rotator between your camera and your telescope. Or, you could plate solve for rotation and manually change the orientation of the camera. Or, you can crop to accommodate the new information, but that's going to make your image a lot smaller. If you're primarily interested in a relatively small object in the center of the image, it's not a big deal. But if there are things at the edge of the image that you want to retain, such as this image with its interesting galaxies along those outer edges, and you've already shot the image, so it's too late to go back and rotate the camera. Or, as in my case, you simply don't want to rotate the camera, because there are other sensitive devices in the image train, particularly an off-axis guider, which would then require time-consuming refocusing. You may just want to save those corners by compensating for the change. It's an advanced astrophotography editing technique, but definitely doable. To save the corners, you have to add the new information separately. I have already prepared the information by stacking it in PixInsight, sharpening it and deconvolving it with the Blur Exterminator. And, this next part is very important, I ran star alignments using the original image as the reference image. So that the new information, in my case, this is information gathered on Night 4, so I'm just going to call it the Night 4 information, aligns perfectly with the previous set of information. And, in this case, that's three nights worth of information that I have been gathering of the region around NGC 4874, the coma cluster. Once the image was star aligned, I then stretched the histogram in a manner that was consistent with the way I stretched the histogram for the previous or original image, and then ran the noise exterminator on the stretched information. Now, the new night 4 information is ready to be added to the original three nights worth of information on the coma cluster. To save those corners, this will have to be done in a layer-based, non-destructive photo editor like Affinity Photo 2. And you could do it also in Photoshop, or probably GIMP. But you need to use a layer-based photo editor, because you're going to have to do precision compositing, and have the ability to make fine adjustments to discrete layers. So, in Affinity Photo 2, I've just dragged in the original Three Nights image, and our new star-aligned Night 4 information. I'm going to duplicate the Night 4 layer and then drag the duplicates below the original layer. And it won't be visible in the image because it's below the original layer. But it is there as a backup should I mess up and need to go back to the original Night 4 information. Now, back up to the top of the layer stack, I'm going to frequency separate the Night 4 information. This will allow me to sharpen the characteristics of the high frequency information where the detail is, so that its information can be added to the original Three Nights image. The default composite mode for high frequency information is linear light, but it's too strong for adding additional high frequency information, so I'll switch to soft light, which is gentler. Before I go any further, I'm going to turn on the low frequency information because I need to see its effects on the final image, and I'm going to give it a purely additive composite mode. So all of the light that has been captured on night 4, whether from the brighter objects or the dark space, will simply be added to whatever light was captured from the original Three Nights information. The screen composite mode is what accomplishes that. But it's a very powerful composite mode, and as you can see, it's too bright. I'll address this by dialing down its opacity with the opacity slider bar to 25%. This only affects the low frequency information. That's where the lights from the night 4 information is being added to the original Three Nights information. This will not affect the sharpness of the new information at all, because sharpness is contained in the high frequency component. That's why I frequency separated this layer, so that I can make discrete adjustments to the high and low frequency information, so that each component's information could be added in the best possible way to the original image. But screening in the information from the low frequency layer allows all of its information to be added to the original Three Nights information, especially to the dark space, and that's important because dark space is normally an information poor area, and that's the playground of noise. If the space is left dark and information poor, it will have a tendency to become noisy and crunchy. By screen compositing in all of Night 4's information, we'll get a better appearance of dark space when the editing is done. In the high frequency layer, I'll apply synergistic sharpening, a concept I've talked about in several previous videos. 
Where and I apply Affinity Photo's powerful sharpening tools to the high frequency information or detail of an image, stacking the tools one on top another in such a way that their information adds beneficially to the tool below. The Unsharp mask goes in as a layer attached to the high frequency layer first, and it's adjusted to bring out the best sharpness within the image. Then the Clarity tool goes in as a layer above the Unsharp mask and it too is adjusted to bring out the best sharpness within an image. And then the high pass filter goes in after the clarity layer and it too is adjusted to bring out the best in the image. And a point of note with the high pass filter is to be sure to change its composite mode to soft light. The high pass filter must be appropriately composited in to successfully add its information. Normally you would use the linear light mode for the high pass filter, but with astrophotography it's just too strong. The soft light composite mode is better. And if you want to learn more about my synergistic sharpening technique, I have numerous videos on the topic. I'll link one to the right of the video now. And you'll also be able to find that link in the description of this video. Now, if doing this in Affinity Photo, one problem to be aware of with its sharpening tools is they tend to crisp up the edges of an image, creating defined boundaries around the image. So I'm going to select all the sharpening tools and then the paintbrush and the color black, which will simply mask out their effects wherever I apply the brush. And I'm going to paint out the edges of the new Night 4 information. Now, all I have to do is balance the brightness of the dark space in the corners with the brightness of the rest of the image with a new Night 4 information screen composited over it. Happily, this is not difficult, just a little tedious, but it really doesn't take long. Now each corner has a slightly different level of brightness, so it's going to require a slightly different level of adjustment for our purposes that is going to be significant. So I'm going to start by making two sets of level tools, one to apply only to the bottom corners and one to apply only to the top corners. I'll show you how that's done shortly. But for the moment, I'm going to focus on the lower corners and adjust the output black level until the black space of the lower corners roughly matches the space of the interior of the image. Note that the level tool is placed on the original image layer, the bottom layer, because that's where the corners are that we have to brighten this balance. I'll then label that levels tool bottom levels. When the bottom corner brightness is balanced, I'll press Ctrl I to invert the tool, which will remove its effects from the layer. It's like a black or opaque mask has been placed over the entire tool. Then I'll select a paintbrush and set it for white, and paint over the corners, removing that mask, letting the levels tool affect those corners. And this leaves the rest of the image untouched by that level tool's effects. Then I'll open another levels tool and label it top levels, and increase the output black level to the dark space of the upper corners matches the interior image, which is a combination of the original three nights information plus the new information from the night four imaging. Note that as I adjust the output black level, all four corners are affected. Don't worry about that. We'll use the same inversion technique in a moment to remove this level's tool's effects from the lower corners. I've just inverted it and opened the paintbrush, and I'll paint out the effect of that mask in the upper corners so that the level's tool can only affect them. But in doing this, I can see there's a very slight difference in the brightness of the space between the lower left and the lower right corners. So I'm going to add another levels tool and call one bottom left and one bottom right. And then I'll make separate specific adjustments on the dark space of the lower left and the lower right corners. I'll then use the paintbrush to mask out the effect of the lower right tool from the lower left corner and use the inversion technique to remove the effects of the lower left tool from all the corners except for the lower left corner and create a better brightness mask between its space and the nearby space of the interior of the image. No, that very fine line that you see between the corners and the interior of the image doesn't actually exist. That's just an artificial boundary that Affinity Photo 2 inserts in there to show you the boundaries between the different visible layers. Anyway, our corrections are nearly done and it's now time to smooth out the merger of this information. I'll do this by right-clicking one of the layers and selecting Merge Visible. This will merge the information from all the visible layers into a single new layer. And this will allow me to use the in-painting tool to erase any lingering vestiges or scars between the corners and the rest of the image. I actually ended up doing such a merger four times, then zooming in and doing a close inspection of each of the four corners, and then making slight adjustments to each of the levels tools till I felt that I obtained the best balance between the brightness of the space of the corners and the interior part of the image. Affinity Photo 2 has a very powerful in-painting brush that can be used to remove objects and correct aberrations. I'm going to use it here to remove that very faint line that demarks the space between the corners and the interior of the image. It's best to apply the in-painting brush in little dabs here and there, and don't make straight lines, put curves and squiggles in them, and this will have the in-painting brush remove that demarcating line and fill it in a somewhat randomized, broken way that creates a more natural transition between the luminosities of the two regions of space. 
This can also be done right over this distant galaxy. Now you have to use the in-painting brush at a place like this judiciously because it can change a little bit of the information. I'm willing to accept some slight changes to keep those corners in this rendition of the image. But at the same time, I want as little information to be changed as possible. The key is zooming in and painting curves and squiggles to break up the transitions created by the in-painting brush. Watch each transition and make sure it's as close to the original image as possible. You can always hit Ctrl Z to undo a transition and then go back and repaint over the area to get a somewhat different effect. With that done, I'll focus on the merger between the other three corners, and in about five minutes any demarcating areas are nicely removed. Since the new Night 4 information was shot only on the Luminance channel on a monochrome camera, it's in black and white. So when it was added to the original three nights of information, the color was slightly washed out. So the saturation was slightly increased to bring back the color available in the previous rendition of the image, and because pushing the processing this hard can bring out any lingering noise that might yet remain in the image, the noise exterminator was run one more time on the image to address that, yielding this final image, in which the additional information both cleans up the appearance of the space and adds to the structural appearance of those extremely distant galaxies, some of which are nearly 20 billion light years away. And the additional luminance information may also help even dimmer objects, such as the extremely distant many quasars in this image, to stand out better. So, if you ever shot information with the intention of adding it to older information, and found that, for one reason or another, the new information was not in alignment with your old information, you don't have to crop in even further. Cropping can flat out remove areas of an image that you might not want to have removed, and the more you crop in, the grainier an image will look. If you want to preserve the entire image, you can use this technique to do so. It is entirely possible to preserve an entire image with new information, even if it's out of alignment with the previous information. Thank you for watching, and let me know if you have any questions or observations in the comments section below. And I hope you have a blast doing astrophotography, and your nights are clear and wonderful. Now, get out there and shoot the sky.